taking the trail of exploring RC crawling? Well, guess what? RC Crawlers and Coffee brings you morning wisdom, the latest rig tunings, and protests that you'll need. So call the bed and stick around. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're joined with a very special guest, Richard, all the way from Hawaii. Hawaii. Introduce yourself, what, Richard. What's up? Hello. Um, What's up, guys? Um, we definitely want to get a backstory on how you got into RCs, what brought you into this, and how the whole lifestyle is in Hawaii. We're, I'm curious more than anything yeah. about that. <laughs> so definitely. Sounds over. good. I mean, we've seen pictures and videos of you crawling, and it's beautiful, man. No, it's yeah. like goals, dude. That's definitely life goals there. <laughs> We're definitely spoiled here all year round. Nice weather. Don't have to worry about super hot heat and freezing cold. So it was funny, Eric, talking about temperature. I'm like, temperature? It's pretty much the same all year round. <laughs> oh, man. So because you guys are tired, it's like, you know, on you. Yeah. predators better for cold weather than this. I was like, huh, I guess we don't really have to worry about that here. <laughs> so, but, yeah. um, I st- actually, my initial start to RC, I was about 13 years old. And uh, they used to have the hobby magazines. So I'm 53 mm-hmm. now. So this is like almost 40 years ago, right? So <laughs> it was 40 okay. years ago. <laughs> Holy crap. Time flies. So 40 years ago it was the hobby magazines with RC cars. And they had this uh, one that I saw. It was a ready to run. It was called the Hunter. I don't know if you remember that one. It was the same time that the uh, frog came out to me, a frog. And anyway, so I got the Hunter. It was like a solid plastic chassis. It was just an off-road buggy, uh, two-wheel drive. And it was pretty much all put together. And that was really fun. I beat the heck out of that. And then my mom then bought me the for Christmas the first RC10 with the gold anodized chassis. And that one came in a million pieces like nothing was put together you had to put literally everything together and solder the esc and all of that and so that was my real first experience uh i guess building a car and it was really fun so my friend had the frog my other friend had an rc10 as well and uh they had money to buy all the fiberglass chassis or whatever it was you know instead of the anodized and the electronic esc back then you know and me, I had to uh, wing it. So to make my chassis lighter, I drilled a whole bunch of holes, you know, that kind of thing. So, but oh, okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. they used to have a dirt track out here and on like on a Sunday, they would race. And back then you had the, the different crystals. So everybody had to make sure you had a, all the crystal packs and, you know, that's how you determine the signal. So everybody had to have a different crystal that you put in the in the controller. That's all it was. You know, back in the what? day. Yeah, when I, so when I, got into it, I think you can only too. race, I don't know I, how I many, 10 cars at a time. or There was a max Nitro. because of that crystals, huh. you know. So I had a few different sets of crystals. And everybody had to check what everybody else had so they wouldn't, you know, overlap. But, um, yeah, yeah, oh, this no is a way. long time ago. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't even know what Damn. happened to that RC-10. I kind of got out of it. And then uh, fast forward to about two years ago. So it was a couple of Christmases ago. My son, who's now 16, you know, I wanted something for us to do for fun that wasn't him sitting in front of a computer playing on his phone. And I saw an advertisement for the FCX 24, you know, so the, uh, what did they call it? Power wagon. And it has two speed, you know, so it can crawl, it can race around. I was like, oh, that's perfect. It was like 150 bucks for one it came comes with a battery ready to run so i was like oh perfect it's only 150 bucks i'll buy one for each of us we can race around and play around um so bad idea (laughs) yeah that was the beginning of the end so we take it out and then unfortunately and unfortunately they have all these videos with like cape crawlers and all these other guys that have uh testing the upgrade parts and so we tested it on you know a lot of you know some of these lines here and it didn't do very well with the vertical so then I was like, okay, what do we need? You know, maybe heavier wheels, longer this. I quickly spent over 300 bucks each on each of those rigs, you know, doing my best to oh, make yeah, it perform it's, it's best. Snowballs. Yeah. And then I was, and then there was a competition here uh, for the 24s. I actually came in second, which was good. Uh, you know, oh, and yeah. my son, uh, he came in second on the, the, the other um, class. So he, we, we ran it class two and class three. Class three, we just took off the bodies and ran it without the body. 
you know, so he took second in the class three. I took second in the class two. I lost to him in the class three, which he loves, but I took him out in the class two, which he <laughs> wasn't happy about. So, but, um, yeah. but then we saw a bunch of these other SCX 24s that were outperforming our rigs. And so, and we went to a couple, so they had a couple of comps and I was like, okay, I got to look into this. And one of the, on, you know, one of the internet guys, uh, they, pro- they were promoting hard park. So I got introduced to hard park. So that was oh, my first build. Yeah. And they're very helpful. I was messaging them like, you know, what parts do I need this and that? Cause I never built one. And, uh, so I probably spent several hundred on that. And then I bought another one. I spent about a grand on that, you know, so it just snowballed and everything I build, it's gotta be two. Right. So one for my son, one for me. And oh, so, I know. Yeah, we we know that. <laughs> so this wall we both here. Have the same uh, issue. I, yeah. So I started with the 24s and we're in it for about a year. And at one point, they were all four wheel steer, all class three. You know, so and then I wanted to build a class yeah. two. So I had to go backwards. And um, but actually it's missing a few that I'm swapping. And I have about one. One, two, three, four, five. I have an, another six chassis and parts uh, sitting in boxes that are waiting for me uh, for the twenty fours. So man, okay, so yeah, you're still building. Crazy. You're still building the fleet. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's been fun and hard park. You know, it, it was. It's they're they're good. They're good rigs, very high quality. But I was having yeah. a very hard time, you know, with the performance. And somebody had posted another. A uh, picture of the Echo chassis by IE Concepts, and, and I really like. It looks like the Bully too, you know that shape for the twenty four. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's yeah. really cool. Um, it was a printed one, and and before this, I had met um, Kyle from Profit Designs, and I wanted sliders for the FCX twenty four, and nobody had made these sliders, right? And so he he had some design, and he's like five bucks. I'm like five bucks. That seems too cheap, you know. So I paid him ten, you know, just. Mm-hmm to be nice. Wow. And he sent me two sets. I'm like, okay, thanks. And then okay. from there, I was like, Hey, can you make this? And he was very quick at trying to design things. And, you know, so that's how that relationship built. And then when I seen the IE concepts, I asked if he could print it for me, but the, it was a really two piece. And so I wanted one piece and this guy named Peter, who's in the UK, he had made one with an 18 degree skid for the, uh, for the echo. I mean, Damn, 18 degrees. So, you know, so the skid is a very extreme skid where the original um, is flatter. So this was the original, which is, you know, it's a, a flatter skid. And it's still, you know, it's oh, okay, still yeah. way better than my hard parts and everything. Um, but I wanted, you know, I saw Peter's one. And so I asked if he could, you know, print it and do different. But so he ended up contacting um Ian from IE Concepts, and they collaborated, and so they actually designed a single rail for the Echo uh, because I'm a pain in the butt. And and then they, you know, he got it made in carbon, and it's doing very, it's you know, the popularity has really grown. And then they collaborated on a couple more chassis, so you know, that's how that's been growing. But you know, that's kind of got me hooked with okay, how can I make it do more vertical? And I like the you know more skid angle for this and four wheel steer and. He just came out with a carrier bearing for, you know, for them. You for know, the recently. 24? So, yeah. So this one actually has the carrier bearing in it. So, so I don't know if you can see the carrier oh, there. Wow. And, yeah. you know, so you can see that how much higher it goes, right? On the right. rear. What's the wheelbase on that? Uh, 167 millimeters. So it's long, but not, not too crazy. I mean, well, I guess compared to some of these others, my, you know, some of the other bills are yeah. about 155. So maybe 10, 12 millimeters longer. So I don't think you can go much shorter with it the carrier sense. because the drive shafts or the dropout and everything. But um, so we're in it from December and maybe till middle of the year, somewhere there. The guy, the local guys here, they were saying, hey, you got to get 110s. You know, so they, they would bring their 24s out, but oh. they have their 110s too. And they say, you should pick up 110. I'm like, God, it's got to be more expensive. And they lied to oh, yeah. me. They said, no, it's about the same price. It's it really it's really not. Well, <laughs> no, no. It, it, it can be if you get the budget parts, but I'm dumb and I want to buy all the expensive stuff. So it's double the price pretty much, right? So, um, yeah. And then I got to build two. So 
I was, you know, searching on the internet and it was between the poise. You know, I really liked that skid angle. You know, that looked pretty killer. Mm -hmm. um, there was this EXO, I forget what it's called, uh, Iger. But in Hawaii, the, the chassis rails for our, you know, class three, the chassis rails has to be at least the length of the wheelbase. So the Iger didn't work. The poise didn't mm -hmm. work. I didn't know the poise didn't work at the time. Um, and there was one more. And then I, I saw Greg's video of him doing that rock hang, you know, that big rock, his famous oh, rock, and he's doing the one wheel hang, yeah, walking the... around and going up. I was like, what yeah. is this? And so that's how I got introduced to the pork belly. And that's what pretty much sold me. So um, I, two things I liked about it. I like that it did that amazing hanger, which I'm sure mm -hmm. others can, but I, you know, that was very impressive, but I like the colors of the rails and stuff, you know, that you could pick. So when I Googled, oh, you know, I looked it up, the... I was like, there's all these colors. I, I always like doing different things too. I don't like to follow the crowd with anything, you know, so I always like to be different. And so I like the fact that nobody really, it's not, it wasn't really well known, you know, in Hawaii or, you know, it's, and it's different. Um, I like the idea of the chassis flex. There was a lot of things I liked about it, you know, so, and then the main thing I liked was the colors, to be honest. I liked that you could pick the colors. <laughs> so um, I was messaging with Eric, you know, over, a couple of weeks, like, okay, what do I need? I don't even know what I need. I figured it's, it's very different than the 24. So I'm messaging with him. And then all of a sudden he posts that the Joker kit, you know, that pretty much oh, it came with yeah, the yeah. servos. I think it was like 600 bucks or so. Um, the rails and everything. I'm like, and I already had another colored rails in my cart. I'm like, forget it. I, I just told her, okay, I want that one. You just, <laughs> I want that one. Yeah. So I ordered it. And I was trying to figure out what else I need, you know, I needed. It's like, okay, well, you need a motor, uh, you need a pinion for the motor, you know, that time you need shocks, you know, so other thing, tire, you know, uh, I think it came with the tires, but I think I needed wheels. So anyway, I was trying to figure out what, what else I needed. And at the same time, I was like, I don't even know how to build it. Like, it's so different. And James, I'm going to mess up his last name, Bernatches, James, he's on the pork belly. He just mm -hmm. rebuilt one. I'm sorry, James. I'm messing up your last name. Uh, I'll yeah. figure out later. It starts with a B. Um, but anyway, so he was selling his, uh, this one. Uh, so the, so his, his oh, black and I yellow think one. I, I think I know. He, I, mm. Yeah. So, That's um, you know, he colorway. posted it and it was like 1350 or something with the remote, you know, but I was like, hey, I got the remote. You know, so I don't need it. And he's like, okay, I'll, you know, how about 1300 I'll split the shipping with you because shipping to Hawaii sucks. I'm like, sold. Yeah. But I was expensive. messaging him with a little, for a little bit. And he, you know, he was, he shared a couple of lines. This thing's hit, this thing hit that was just crazy, you know, with the vertical and mm -hmm. stuff. And I was like, I hope somebody else buys it before I do. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. And so finally I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And the main reason I bought it was because the parts that I had was almost identical. Deluxe Portal Trans, similar motor. You know, I like the wheelbase. And so I, I figured if I buy it, my son can drive it and I can use it to copy to build my Joker build. And it was it was very mm. helpful, you know, because he had the bacon tray and everything. So it really helped me. I could just kind of half disassemble it and figure out where everything went. So that was super helpful. And it was, I mean, it was already a killer off the bat. So I, I, I don't think I changed yeah. anything. Well, I did some changes, but originally... I think I maybe moved the shock position a little bit, but that was about it. And then I eventually put on the carrier bearing on the back. So I don't know if you can see that there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So what so, wheelbase are you running on that rig? So it was thir so James said it was 13.75, but when I measured it, it was 13 half, um, which I ended up chopping the no <laughs> the nose a little bit. I don't know if you can see that there. Oh, okay. I chopped it and put it back yeah. together. Um, because it, uh, it, it would do fine on the regular rocks uh, where we usually climb, but we had a comp where it was boulders and there was like the overhang and the nose was getting caught up. And so oh, we couldn't do it. So underneath you, yeah. I was going to chop it off. And this was right before the Sporky or right around there. Oh, no, there's Sporky was available. So, But I was just going to chop it off kind of like the Sporky. But good thing I didn't because, you know, the comp, the rails, they said it's got to be at least the length. So the rails 13 and a half. So, and we're at 13 and a half, so it was okay. I swear oh, I made the links. So oh, I yes, made the right. links for the, I make my own links, right? So I made the links 
And I thought I did it same length eye to eye, but apparently it's a quarter inch longer. So now I'm at 13.75, so I need a rear bumper or something. But we haven't had a comp here. So um, so it's running 13.75. I did it in my Joker build first. And, you know, there was, you know, it's like, well, you don't really need it, this and that. But, you know, with the 24s, I did notice that for the extreme breakovers, it, it does help. And I figured yeah. I'm making my own links. The parts aren't that expensive. Um, the profit designs, I asked them to build me uh, to design one that was just straight across. Actually, I have one here that my friend Ralph bought one, uh, bought a PBX. And so he wants me to put the carrier. So it uses this Rhino. Oh, yeah, I've seen oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the Rhino. This is the V2 yeah. one. I get the V2 one because the V2 one has holes in the output shafts. Uh, the V1 does not. Um, I wasted about the cost of a brand new one buying drill bits, trying to drill it out. I, I got it done, but I should have just bought a new one in hindsight. But anyway, uh, so he designed this um, carrier, and it, it, you just swap the parts out, the, the shaft and the bearings. And it, it works perfect. It's really smooth. Uh, so you're using just the guts of the Rhino? Just the guts, yeah. So I was like, you know, let's let's do it, because I feel like I felt like I was losing out you know because you know originally the links kind of went you know from here down right so i felt like i was losing out maybe you know i don't know an inch or so of clearance and you know right now it it's That's pretty crazy. much tucks up almost all the way so yeah anyway. now, when you say you make your own links do you have like a lay or a lathe or no do you just bend straight uh, links. Yeah, so it's a threaded rod and a stainless steel tubing that's about a millimeter thick. So the total diameter of the stainless oh. steel tubing is six millimeter, and uh, it's four millimeter threaded rod. It's really heavy though. So even the stainless steel links, uh, it's skinnier. It's it's much lighter. So that's the negative thing about it. But I don't have a lathe, and I was really considering getting a lathe, but I got to stop myself sometimes. So. Uh, but yeah, I started making links for you, the, what, I was going to say I started making links for the 24s because uh, when I first got like the Echo and whatnot built, um, I, I felt like I wanted a double bend link. And RC Steve, you know, I messaged him, and the communication was pretty slow at it. But he didn't have um, double bend links at that time. Nobody did. Mm. And so I, I felt like I was, you know, after the skid. You know, I felt like after the scale, oh, that's hard to see with the body on. I felt like I was losing. Is that the Batmobile? The like Batmobile. The old yeah. Batmobile? Yeah. <laughs> wow, it was, uh, so I, I really trashed the paint job, but my friend said, make you look like you ran over somebody blood in the front. So anyway, that was fun. Dude, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's cool. And then, so I felt like. You know, from the skid to here, you kind of lose out. So when it's going over the rocks, like you get that little bit extra uh, clearance, which allows the rear to hit. And so it really it made a big difference on the 24s, uh, you know, mm. so I felt like it would. And it really did. So I pretty much try to do it with all the 24s. And even with my full rail, you know, so I did a double bend. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Yeah, you yeah, see it there. Yeah. So it tucks up right after How the skid. How do you like skid. the full rail? Yeah. This full rail is killing it. It's 12 and a half <laughs> inch. And so I got to tell you, so, okay, I'm, I'm all over the place. Sorry. You know, but okay. No, so Hawaii no, guys, there's, right? There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. Hawaii guys, they like the scale, you know, so the, the scale mm -hmm. look. And uh, right. there's a few, there's a handful of guys that have really good performing rigs and mostly G-Speed. Mostly G speed. Oh, and uh, Reapers, you know, that type of thing. And then the Jekyll yeah. and Hyde. So, um, so when I, and they weren't really having comps. And then the other guy that was throwing the class three comp, it's like head to head. And so let's say I'm going against one of you guys and I go first. I fail twice, but you fail twice. Because I went first, I get to go on. The other guy loses. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So, I mean, I, I know they have to do something, but to me, I didn't like that. So I've won just because I went first and I've lost because I wasn't first, you know, so, but that's how they do oh. it. That's how he runs his comp. And, 
sometimes just luck of the draw. Um, right. So that's why I was like, okay, I'm going to, no one else is throwing comps, even for the 24s. One guy that was doing it, unfortunately, went to jail. So I don't know why. Uh, the other guy kind of got burnt out. So I've been trying to throw comps just to have, you know, something for people to, to do here. To do. Right. But anyway, so I did two of my comps. I'm calling it Outlaw King just because I'm like, no MOA, no servo winching, you know, to winch up. Outside of that, I don't yeah, right. care. Anything goes, you know, whatever you want. Dual motor, whatever, right? Um, mm -hmm. and so I thought there would be a whole bunch of killers coming out. I set the lines with my, mine and my son's PBXs and I was like, okay, hey, we can't win, but we want to play, you know? And I figured we set lines that we can hit consistently, not a hundred percent of the time, but we can hit them thinking that other people would have an easier time. So my first comp, I had 11 lines, 10 gates and a bonus. The winner hit three gates out of the 11. Oh shit. Just three. Only three. And I let them practice. So before, for like almost an hour, I was letting them practice on the lines. Right. And um, okay. they just, their rigs just couldn't do the vertical. I, they just couldn't do it. Right. And so I was shocked. Oh. Um, and then, so the last comp, we made the lines a little easier. I set the majority of the lines with this 12 and a half inch wheelbase. So I, nice. I made it seven lines and a bonus. So total of eight lines. This rig, could easily hit six of them consistently, like almost 100%, six of them. Two of them, one of them, it can't hit at all. It was a crazy where I think you need four-wheel steer. And the other one, mm. it was difficult, and you know maybe a third of the time it can hit it. But it's not impossible for a 12-and-a-half-inch rig with no rear yeah. steer, right? And these other guys, so the winner of the comp only hit four lines out of the eight. So, so and we made it easier. So I thought it was better. And there were a handful of guys uh, who couldn't make it that I, you know, that could hit all the lines or the majority of the lines, right? But the people that were mm. came, you know, who came, first place was four lines, you know, uh, second place was three, you know, hit three or two of them actually, you know. So and people were like, oh, maybe you need a longer wheelbase or this, and I'm like, well, it's a twelve and a half. And so I posted videos on their page after, like. Here's my 12 and a half inch oh, ring no, hitting all these lines. Rub a little you know? bit of, so, uh... <laughs> so it's been a real killer. You know, um, I made the front a little shorter. I just did the setup sheet, by the way. I, I, I can't remember oh, okay. exactly, nice. but the front is a little shorter than the rear just to, just to help clear the skid a little bit. Um, but it's, it's been impressive. The vertical is really good. I just weighed it. I, I didn't realize, but it's like 69% front weight bias. So, which is why the downhill kind of tends to want to flip. So I'm oh, thinking about, yeah, I have aluminum hexes and uh, hex hubs on the back, hubs on the back. So I was thinking about mm -hmm. maybe putting the, I have some brass, maybe put a little more weight on the back. I don't know. Just, but, yeah, just to kind of let that rear sit down. A little bit. Yeah. So yeah. even with, um, you know, with, with the PBXs, they were sitting at about 68 front, 32 back. But since I put in these links, it's now 66-ish front. 34 back you know something which you is still see good. a better downhilling once you way better links? it's much more planted so you know we're having a hard time with some of the downhills and now i mean you still got to be cautious but it, it yeah. was much more planted and it's still the the pull-ups is still great you know there was one and my son 99 percent of the crazy lines that i video it's my son's like i found a line i'm like oh god what now uh, like <laughs> you know, like it's just the last one. It was crazy where it went over the rock. It's like oh, past 90 and it pulls up. I'm like, no way. And then I did it, you know, so, you know, and he'll yeah. sit there like for a battery, look at just trying to hit the same yeah. line, you know. And I mean, so there's a couple of them was like that. There was one where it was this mean side hill. You know, we showed Eric and months. Every time we go, he'll spend maybe half hour trying to hit that darn line. He was getting closer and closer. All of a sudden, he's like, I hit it. I'm like, no way. And it's always, he always hits it when I'm not watching. A little suspicious. But anyway, mm. you know, but then he did it again. <laughs> and then I did it, um, you know, which is, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's been. Yeah, we uh, call that the Ryan effect. So there's a guy out here locally, Ryan, who uh -huh. does YouTube. And you can be crawling and you're chilling, you're doing your lines and, you know, you're killing it. And here comes Ryan with his camera, and all of a sudden, dude, and it's it's constantly with everybody. 
He comes yeah. up and he gets, you know, you're, he's he filming you. Right in there. And then it's just like, you can't do the fucking line. It's oh, like yeah. you're sitting there struggling the whole time. And he's just, you can see like his face just go from like, come on, dude, like, what the hell? Like, you just did it. Like, what's going on? And then he'll just get up and leave. And then once he leaves, a couple of tries later, you're done. You know, you're doing yep. the line. So it's, it's just weird, but it's funny. Yeah, I joke with my son. I'm like, you know, are, how long is it going to take you? Because I don't know if I have enough memory space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's no, fun. But it's always when that camera comes up or someone else is watching you where you're just like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Getting nervous in performance. <laughs> yeah, in a sense. So it's been, um, you know, so it, the community, the RC community here, um, I, I, it doesn't seem like it's that big, you know, so... You know, there, there's a bunch of regular guys. Uh, they do like the scale. Uh, it's more class one, class two, those type of things. Uh, so I'm trying to build the class three. You know, there's some guys that are into it. And, you know, a couple of the, the guys that's been around, they're like, you know, we guys never even considered these lines. You know, like they they wouldn't even look at that and think they could hit it. So he likes that fact that, you know, um, we're we're pushing the boundaries of it. You know, and we're always yeah, tuning you're unlocking and, new lines. Yeah, you know, and it was funny. So my son, my son can be kind of a jerk, uh, like passive aggressive, like not on purpose. It's funny. So one of the guys had a new chassis. I don't want to say, you know, but it was uh, the prototype, and he built it. looked really nice. You know, it has the. It looks like kind of like a poised front and this. So maybe I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, it's not poised. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I mean, it did fine. But but you know, so yeah, yeah. there was a couple of lines, and so you know, my son showing him the lines, and he was he was fighting with the lines, trying trying, and then he's like, "Well, mine doesn't have four wheel steer, you know, on this line." So my oh. son goes back and he does it without using the rear wheel steer. <laughs> And so that guy, so now oh, that guy's like, man. oh, so he's sitting there another half hour. He still can't hit it. And then he goes off. So the three of them go off and my son's showing him other lines and he comes back down. He's like, your son broke my rig, you know, because you know, he couldn't hit the line. <laughs> it wasn't major, you know, oh, but he no. was joking. He was joking yeah. too. But, yeah. um, but that's another you know, thing with four wheel steer. Um, it's, it could either make the, the rig really good or it can make you, it could throw you off. No, for sure. It's so it's like there's it, it there's times the driver. Where, yeah, it also has to do with the driver also. Yeah, but there's times oh, yeah. where I mean I still haven't built a rig with four wheel steer, Same. but I've driven some, and I'm like, okay, I can see the potential there. But to me, I I I, I still refuse to build one until I'm ready <laughs> because it's gonna. I know it's gonna ruin me. It's gonna ruin me from going back to a regular, you know, drag rear. So that, yeah. I'm holding off, but eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get down on the four wheel steer, but till then yeah, I'm gonna try at to one point, as hard as I can. At one point, I think I had 10 24s and then I had the two PBXs, Oof. all four wheel steer. I had no drag axle rigs, zero. And then we had a we had a uh class two count, which is no no four wheel steer allowed. So I had to make a, so I have a few now, but I had to make them. You can lock and, them out, right? You don't have to use it. Yeah. So how I got into the four wheel steer is that first comp that I came in second, uh, you know, I'm I'm following the other guy uh, through the gates. It was it was kind of a head to head thing, and I kept thinking, "Oh, he's going to hit the gate," and then he rear steers around it. I'm like, "That cheating bastard!" You know, so <laughs> uh, so that's why. So the first mod I did, the big mod I did, was I put four wheel steer on the FCX, and uh, for both of mm. us. And from then, it was like everything. I wanted four wheel steer. But you're right. You know, if you're turning the wrong way uphill, it can roll you off. So there are things that you know it's. It's not good. It's heavier on the rear. So it was really hard for, for me to get the uh, weight bias up, you know, on the on the PBXs, oh, you know, to, to even get it right. there. You know, I have the brass third member. You know, I, I uh, the wheels we have, they didn't have the brass rings for, but I put the stick on wheel weights. And I mean, it took a lot of oh, brass okay. hubs, yeah, yeah, you know, so it took quite a bit of work to get it um, to that weight bias. But it made a big difference from 60 to 65 just the climbing ability it made a big difference but yeah i'm mm. spoiled uh we have some comps here that don't allow the four-wheel steer and i really it's it's hard for me <laughs> i'm so spoiled <laughs> and that's why i avoid it i don't want to yeah. get used to it well radio that's right it is kind of cheating <laughs> but you know so the what radio do you use for four-wheel steer what is that what radio do you use for, oh. for, for four-wheel steer <laughs> So I have the uh, GT5, and uh, so cool oh, thing, RC. They they made this. Oh, thumb, uh, nice. He sells this kit, 
it's 25 bucks. It comes with the potentiometer and then the, what, the, the, the knob and some wires. And so basically you have to open it up. You cut out the channel five um, knob. And then you solder mm -hmm. the three wires from the channel five. You tape it down and you solder it to the potentiometer. You drill a hole and he gives you a template, you know, paper template so you can place the hole. And then you just stick it through, hot glue it in, put it on. And yeah, so you can. Wow. It, so to me, it's very. And this is the main reason I got the GT5 was because I saw that he had this. And that mod. Yeah. There are a couple yeah, other radios right that can do it. Too. What's that? I say it's, it's it's really convenient because it's right there by your thumb. So oh, yeah. you can just be throttling it and just exactly. That and that's a lot of the time that's the issue that I had that like you're steering and then now you got like this other like you're throwing up gang signs when you're driving, you know. <laughs> so there's the there's people that have the thumb thing, you know, so they can steer the big wheel with the thumb and then they grab the top channel six, you know, kind of thing. But uh I'm not that coordinated. So I, I like, you know, I, I like this idea. And so I've done, I think I've done it for five or six guys locally as well. You know, they're like, you know, so they order it. And I was like, I'll, I'll say just 25 bucks labor. It, it takes me like an hour and a half to do it. But I don't, you know, I want, I don't, yeah. you know, I just want to make something. And I was joking with them. It's like, well, I figured I can, as long as I make three and don't screw it up, you know, that'll pay for a radio if I screw one up. <laughs> oh, there you go. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, so, and about, actually, yeah. sadly, I did one for my friend, but I think the radio was just old. I still have it, and I, I screwed it up. But I was like, don't worry, I'll just, mm. I have another one, you know. So I gave him my spare, which was new. I just, you know, I just had a spare, and I bought another one to, uh, I'm going to take you to Proline just in case one of our radios craps out, you know, so we have that. But, <laughs> but it's not difficult. That's it's not way. difficult to do, Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people out here use the NB4. Yeah, the Noble Noble Four. So I think I there is a mod one. for the Noble Four, but I am not. The GT5 is super easy. I mean, like it, the the Noble, it, it I, I would probably break it. I'm not comfortable. And they even <laughs> for the Radio Link, whatever you know, they have one for that one, but that one looks difficult as well. So he does have it for a couple. Um, I know my limitations. <laughs> you know, so. The GT5, yeah, I've done about 10 of them so far. One, yeah. So, you know, uh, six for the guys locally oh, so and four for us. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't too uh -huh. difficult. So I was watching, and he has the videos on how to do it. So I was watching the videos. I'm like, it's not bad, you know, to do. So, right. So, Proline by the Fire, are you excited for that? Oh, super, super excited. I mean, just to meet you guys and crawl with you guys, you know, and, and see all the lines, you know, the, the lines there. My son, too. You know, my, I haven't really, I think I took my son on a vacation. Me and the mom are not together, unfortunately. And, you know, financially, I wasn't able to really take him on any trips. You know, the last one we went, you know, I took him, he was like four years old. And so we haven't really gone on any trips. And, you know, he really likes the RC. And so you heard about ProLine, all you guys going. I'm like, okay. So I got to take him out of school a couple of days because we're going early. <laughs> but, uh, I was oh, like, you nice. know, so he's gonna like. Yeah, that. I think it'll be nice. I mean, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah. Are you coming here directly, or you're gonna come down there? What is that? When you fly in, you're gonna fly in to the bay, or are you gonna go to LA? Uh, so we fly into LAX, and then I think we're gonna rent a car and drive over. Uh, we rented an oh. RV, and they're supposed to deliver it there. And what's this? A Hardline Killers, Jerry, uh, Ramirez, yeah. Ramirez. Uh, so he's supposed to be there from Wednesday, you know, because the vendors can go early. And so he he's going to meet him, uh, meet the RV guy Thursday morning, you know, and so we're going to park there. I didn't know where to park. And I mean, people are dropping pins, but I, I, I'm not familiar. So I figured if, you know, if Jerry can meet him there and there's park there and there's there's about 10, I think, 10 other Hawaii people going as well. And so they're, you know, they're. Some of them are uh, sharing the RV with Jerry as well. So, you know, we'll be at least we'll be all together, you know. So I hopefully it's not nice. too far from you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, going back to scale rigs, I know there's uh, a lot of guys out there run Leafs, right? And like hard bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So they have uh, 
competitions, uh, you know, comps that is leaf spring only. They just had one with mm-hmm. his partner as three rigs and you could help each winch each other or whatever. Um, oh, you know, so cool, that was man. kind of interesting. I didn't, I didn't uh, make that one. Uh, I don't have a leafer anyway, but, uh, and then another guy who builds a lot of rigs, he is ha- going to have a competition for leafers, like a performance leafer comp. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. Um, uh, but then yeah, normally, I see a lot of videos. Oh. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just saying normally, uh, it's just class one or class two. It doesn't necessarily have to be leafer, but it's all the scale points. And so actually the reason I built the full rail was to participate in the class two comps here you know so okay um but that whole scale point stuff it's like hard body and squares and i don't get it you know and i'm so busy oh, i watched that darn video based? like three times you know let's square whatever and i'm like i don't i don't get it yeah so, so the guys running the c2 class are they sorka oh uh, not okay. really so they that that's their base you know so they wanted to make okay. it where if any of the guys go to the mainland, the, their rigs would fall into that rule set, though. You know what I mean? So they didn't want to deviate too much from the Sorka rule set because they wanted, when they travel, to not have to make adjustments. You know, so so uh, it, it, they, they do okay, kind of this, follow. Yeah, because uh, what I've seen people do, they, they, they stay, like, just like your reaction was like, I didn't want to deal with that. I think a lot of the uh, things that people should consider is when they're doing like a class two is maybe to have it more inviting to people, ha- drop some of those crazy like rules about, you know, yeah. the bumper clearance or whatever, just have us like a platform. And, yeah. and then we've seen that out here when we do runs where we're just kind of freely just like, Hey, you know, it's a C2 kind of style, you know, just got to have, you know, like it doesn't have to be a hard body, mm-hmm. but uh, we're not very like strict on the rules. That way, it's inviting for everybody to come out and have yeah. similar style rigs, and it's fun. You know, no one's you know gonna be ah, oh, dude, that guy's got like you know some extra some, clearance than some I do. Some basic rules, yeah. like like this this size tires we're running, yeah, um, this size body, I agree, rails or C channel or just something simple, yeah. So that it so more people come, more, yeah, more it's, it's fun. People have a good time. You know, no one's angry that someone outperformed anyone else's yeah. it's just like oh okay cool like you know there's even c rail um comp stock, stock. yeah you know, pretty much yeah c rail competition where and those are fun those, those are, fun. are those are fun to watch because it's stuff that we never thought oh a stock one can do and they're doing it out there it's pretty cool yeah i agree i mean i i wish it, it was that way so my friend ralph he bought a pbx and uh, he also has the dragon and so the Nordic Dragon, it's <clears throat> high skid angle. It does really well as well. Mm. Um, so he was thinking his Nordic Dragon is going to be the class three, and he's going to build the PBX as a class two. So that that's what he, you know, his initial uh, thoughts were. And he doesn't get to crawl very often, you know, he's kid and other half and that kind of stuff. So, um, but he wants to throw his own class two, which. Basically, you need a body, uh, wheelbase max, tire max size, rupture, you know, so, but you're very loose rules, you know, no four wheel right. steer, you know, and I think that'll be better. You know, there's people like, well, you can point yeah, out is. with a Lexan body, but I was like, I don't even know. And there's another guy that's going to do a, a class two, but he's like, okay, you need six uh, accessories and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm not going to that one. You know, it's like too much already. I mean, you can so, always do magnets. So if you ever wanted to like just run like accessories that you want to just yeah. take off after the fact, you just put them on little magnets and you can take oh, them right off smart. afterwards. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just saying like, if like, if like, okay, fine, here's my six accessories, just put little magnets on there, boom, go and do your thing. Or it could be like interior. Like I think there's like fire extinguishers or like little yeah. details that you can just yes. throw in the interior and you're done with it. Uh, yeah. Antenna. So- and it doesn't weigh much, you know, little cheat codes like that. So I need to, uh, fun, I bought a nice um, fiberglass body, a very expensive, nice fiberglass body. Is it? Is uh, it? The, from, uh, <laughs> no, uh, TNT. Oh, so, oh wow. no, yeah, I remember seeing that. So it was through, uh, who made that one? Tom Higgins. Uh, he, you know, he's having yeah, a made so at TNT. Fun, yeah. And so yeah. I just didn't, I, I never the, saw he released a bug. It was the, yeah, bus, it went quick. Bus bodies. Yeah, so no um, shit. 
I have it mounted. I don't want to drill holes. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I'm no, gonna try to remember, Velcro. Right, I think. Yeah, Velcro's good. Um, what else did we use? I don't know. I, I wanted Velcro's to put it on my. You can do magnets too. Yeah, like I, do I, for like I RC think, drift. So I was thinking about putting it on on this flat rail. I mean, the the full rail. You know. Uh huh. But that looks with dope. the steering, the super shafty steering, it hits the front of the cab. You know, so I got to put the cab further back, oh. so because it, it was hitting the cab pretty hard, so I got to mount it further uh -huh. back, I think. But anyway, so I haven't really been focused on that. My friend gave me another uh, hard body, and I was I was trying to pinch the front, and I messed up on the cuts on one, so I'm just it's sitting there. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. So well, the yeah. thing. Okay, so the cool thing about hard bodies is like they don't have to be perfect. So I used to worry about, oh, my paint and all this stuff. But what happens is when you do mistakes like that, it actually works in your favor. You want to do like a patina look or if it's like a damage oh. to, to the to the actual body. So where on that cut that you messed up on, it might be a little off. Just take yeah. a heat gun to it and and like push it in with a rock and it takes the shape of it and it looks like it's just a damaged panel. Hmm. Okay. So that's they, in a sense, you hide your mistake. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it helps. But yeah. it helps. But it gives you that that you know that look. That realistic. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I need to work on that. So I have um. So I, I have the uh, full rail for that, and then I I did I have the cots as well, and. So Eric was driving it when he was here, and I was just like, I, I'm so spoiled with the 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 way the PBX performs with you know just the flex and everything. That's like give. Yeah, yeah, you know that the cots it does really well, but I just it seems so stiff. I don't know, you know, it's just it's different. Well, the thing is because you're so used to your pork bellies, and that's yeah. the thing that you get yeah. used to that that small, even if it's a little bit that small flex, it makes a difference. It's very um, yeah, yeah. So my friend Ralph, who bought Very the forgiving. PBX for the class two, you know, last weekend we were testing lines for his his comp, you know, trying to help set some lines mm -hmm. that tone it down a little bit, you know, so people can actually complete the lines. And so I was testing with my full rail, but his, so my, his wheelbase is 13 half right now. And so he, my full rail was hitting lines that his PBX wasn't able to hit. And so I forgot it was PBX because <laughs> he had a body and I'm like, Wait a minute, it's a PBX. Let's look at this thing. And so I had him adjust shock position on the front and this, and then it, the front, the rear was too much. We had, immediately was doing better. And then so he's making a couple more adjustments uh, on it. But mm -hmm. so he stayed longer. We had to leave. And he's like, dude, this thing is doing better than the dragon now. You know, I was like, you oh, know, wow. and I, I know. So I yeah, had it's the a dragon slight as well. adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that um it's we like I said, we came out, you know, we say it's a tuner chassis, you know, and people sometimes don't comprehend like, well, how are you going to tune your chassis? I'm like, well, it all comes to play because now you're tuning braces, you're tuning Shock your addition. shocks. Uh, so any little adjustments, you can just adjust a little bit more, a little bit more give or if you're more, it also depends on the style of your driving. Mm -hmm. So right. if you want, if you're more used to like a, a rigid chassis, you can yeah. stiffen up the pork belly and have that same feel. And then you can slowly start backing out of those braces and then getting a little bit more flex and then once you get used to that bring them down even more and get a little bit more flex and so then it, you can do it in different stages and so i think that's what um sometimes you gives you that little bit of extra edge is having that yeah. tunability i agree because i had the nordic dragon as well um and it did really well you know the breakover is amazing right you know so it did really well but that was something i noticed about it on some of the like the side more twisty lines it was stiffer and the pork belly would walk it and the nordic was having a little more trouble for those what it, it will float the front end yeah and then it would it would tend to roll more you know and roll mm. off the line more versus the pork belly seems to stay more planted with the with the rear flexing and you know that kind of thing but you can you can grind it you can have the, the rig kind of bounce on the line until it catches yeah versus the Eric the does that stiff, a lot so. actually on his style driving and then I didn't really tune the cots much, so I built it, um, but I hadn't had a chance to tune it. Um, but compared the cots with the Nordic Dragon, the, the Nordic Dragon did better in general. Uh, you know, but I sold the Nordic Dragon because putting a body on it for a class two with that skid, it was it just didn't work out well, you know. 
Mm -hmm. um, you would the body would hang low and you kind of lose the advantage of the skid where the cots is easier, you know, with the way the rail is designed. So I kept that one. God. Um, and but deb debating on swapping it out now, I just not real happy with it. <laughs> but anyway, but, you know, I mean, it, it does good in certain, you know, with the break over certain things, you know, of course, but um, it's just different. And then so after I helped Ralph tune his PBX, so he stayed longer and he was driving his dragon. And he was like the PBX was hitting lines easier than the drag dra dragon was. So he's like, oh, you know, man. and then he wanted the carrier. So Eric just sent me, uh, you know, we just picked up these rails for him, you know, with, that has a hole, right, for the carrier. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, so he got the new yeah. rails that didn't have the hole. And so, mm. so I was like, oh, your rails are in. And he's like, oh, maybe I should just build another one. You know, and, keep oh. it. and I was like, I, I, it's up to you. I was up to you. Dude, and that's then, the thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it that's happens. always like, how it goes. Like, you want to build something, you're like, oh, well, like, I might as well just keep that one and just start yeah, a fresh build. build. I know. And that's, yeah, I'm the same different. way. That's why I have that many 24s and then right? Like, yeah, I was going to say. You got any yeah, 24 I really should sell some because a lot of them don't get driven, but I'm like, oh, I can't bring myself. Anyway. Um, so anyway, but he was like, maybe I'll swap the Nordic out or maybe I'll swap the Nordic out. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, his dragon out and sell the dragon. And I was like, well, it's up to you. You know, it's just different, right? It, it's not that yeah. one's necessarily better than the other. It's just what you're used to. It's just different, you know? So he's like, all right, for now, he'll swap the, the PBX and he'll debate on that one. But he was at the point where he was like, I think I'm just going to sell the dragon and swap swap the parts, sell the rails and swap the parts, you know, kind of thing. So, oh, but yeah, which is good too, you know. But I said, you know, maybe just keep it for now because it 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 does do well, you know. It's just different, right? So, but yeah. he, his text was like, "See what you did." Now I'm a now I'm a total, uh, you know, res PBX fanboy now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I get it. You know, yeah, that's us. Fun. You know, no, they're fun. They're fun rigs. They are, yeah. They're fun rigs, man. So, um, you know, but so kind of getting back to the comp and so the most recent comp we threw, right? You know, and so the last comp, you know, I ran at the end just to play and then my wheel fell off at gate like six or something. You know, just, I don't know. So Your I just wheel stopped. fell off. Yeah. The, so, what I did, so what I've been just... doing was I've been experimenting with hubs, different hub widths. And so uh -huh. sometimes, I put in only one screw in the hub just to see the width. And I think I forgot oh, to put in the rest no. of the screws. So the wheel oh, fell so the off wheel the came hub. Off with the hub or like everything came off. Well, the hub it was wasn't still just there. Like, the no. wheel fell off. <laughs> Center. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, I was so yeah, remembering. That sounds about right. You probably only had one or two screws. In one. There. I think it was one. Yeah. So then I was Jeez. like, mm. <laughs> so I, so I just stopped. So my friend was giving me crap that, you know, I, I, you know, didn't even complete my own lines at the, my own comp, right? You know, but oh, so this last <laughs> joking. So this last one, um, I had my son run, so I let them practice because I know the lines are hard. You know, and I, I you know, I, I was like, I want them to be able to complete the lines. You know, I, I felt really mm -hmm. bad keeping the score, and it was fail, fail. They, you know, they're failing twice every line. You know, it was, it, I felt really bad. You know, and everybody's thinking these lines are impossible. So I went, I showed them that the lines are not impossible. You know, they're difficult, but they're not impossible. So this one, mm -hmm. I had my son run first and had everybody watch him so they could see that the lines are possible and kind of how he hits it with, you know, they might not be able to hit it the same way, but I really wanted people to have more success on the lines. And just if they're a better driver, they'll hit it faster. And that's the, the lowest time mm -hmm. wins, that kind of thing. Right. And still yeah. they, everybody struggled, you know, a uh, majority struggle. Like I said, the winner only completed four lines and I went last and I completed um seven out of the eight and the one is that with the four wheel steer was the killer side hill that i i failed a couple of times you know so um but i hit seven out of the eight you know and pretty easily and so my friend one of my friends has a uh he bought the thumper the, the poise thumper but he hasn't tuned mm -hmm. it so he built it didn't really tune it much um and so uh, he ran it yeah so you know being on the rocks uh on those extreme lines was the first time he was on that extreme line so so he was struggling with the vertical and stuff. And then he saw mine. Uh, he's like, man, you made that look easy. You know, I'm like, so I was joking because he did really good at the other comp. That's the lines aren't difficult. It's more like a rock race. You know, the lines aren't too difficult uh... and it's not that vertical. And I'm not a fast driver. Apparently I'm a technical driver, not a fast driver. <laughs> so, um, so I didn't do that well. So I joked with him. I said, I have a good car, bad driver, you know, and that's, that's what I mean. You know, it's like the car performs yeah. really well, but I don't, you know, I'm not a fast driver, you know, through a, through a course, you know, I don't have that experience, you know, so, 
And so now, so at the end of it, I was asking, you know, should I make the lines easier? What do you guys think? I feel bad people failing lines. And my, my intention was not to discourage people. My intention was to show that your rigs can do more, you know, so let's try yeah. to up the yeah. level, you know? So, I mean, you could be great here and you go to the mainland and it's like, you're not even hitting the lines, right? You know, at, at these other comps. So I was trying, my intention was to increase the, the performance of the cars, everybody, and show them it is possible, you know, and let's tune it. And, you know, so even there, I'm trying to, okay, well, maybe it's your shock position. Maybe it's this, what's your weight bias, you know? So just trying, and not like I'm the pro, but, you know, if I can, whatever I can do to share my knowledge and how my rigs are able to hit those lines, you I know, I want to do. That's healthy because what, yeah. it, that, what that creates is um, that drive, like, oh, shit, like, I want to go back to that comp and I want to, I want to do it now. So that tends to, you know, have that uh, motivation. But yeah, exactly. The yeah. Motivation to come back, rebuild your rig and make it better. You know, and so that, I that's think, what I was hoping, you know, you know and that's kind of how we got healthy. our PBXs to be that way. You know, we that 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 spot where we have the comp, me and my son go there all the time. That's like our home field advantage. So that's another reason, you mm. know, we want to compete. You know, I always tell people, you know, we're not going to win the prizes, but we just want the pressure and see how we stack up. Right. And the lines that we select are not lines that we're running all the time. Like we hit it like, OK, we want to make sure it's doable, you know, that, that it is possible. Right. And, you know, it's not like we've practiced on it, you know, months and months. But, you know, but I was like, OK, it's not fair because that's our home course. Right. You know, so. Right. But that's how we did. It's like, OK, we couldn't hit this line. OK, maybe if we do this. Oh, now we can hit that line. You know, and so we're familiar with some of those crazy lines. It's like, OK, if we make an adjustment and it does better or worse on that line, now we know, OK, maybe that wasn't good or it was good type of thing. So, you know, that's also right. our testing ground. But. You know, that was my goal as well. And that's what, you know, the, the my friend with the thumper, he said, he said, no, don't make it easier. I'm coming back. I want my revenge. I was like, great. That's exactly. That's, that was the point I was trying goal, to right? put across earlier. Yeah, no, I think and, that's yeah. more than fair. And, yeah. and one of the other guys, he also had, uh, so he also bought a the, the T3, uh, just the new rails, not the thumper one. Mm -hmm. And so he was at the comp as well. And similarly, you know, the vertical wasn't as good. His front shocks were too big and he kind of knew it, uh, but he didn't have it. So. Uh, he last weekend, he came out again, he just to play and he was able to hit more lines, you know, I, I'd say over half the lines that he yeah. wasn't able to. And that's what I wanted, right? Is, you know, to have people come out and, you know, be able to hit half the lines, at least that was my goal and at least be able to hit half right. the lines and the ones they couldn't hit, they would have to tune for, you know, or, or if they wanted to or not, but, you know, and that's how they'd yeah. be able to tell if the performance was getting better or not, you know, is by you know, okay, I made these adjustments. Did it help or not? Right. But that's how, you know, yeah. over the past year, that's all I've been doing. And my son, he's like, it's junk now, dad. What did you do? You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, I switched this. I'll switch it back. You know, but that's how, yeah. that's how it's been. Right. Okay. Um, but it's even like, even shocks and shock oil. I, I run, my son's has the drab, drab text. Mine is desert lizards and the guides here. And a lot of people online, they, they're really uh, anti-desert lizards. I don't know why they get yeah. such a bad rap. Oh, yeah. It's funny. And uh, one guy here, he... Well, I think you, you reached out to me when you first started building it, too. I remember. That's right. You were trying That's to, right. I was trying to walk you through them. It's like, I. it took me almost, shit, man, I want to say like two weeks to tune a set of desert lizards. And it's just I, because I'm picky with my shocks. But me it too. It was just like trying, there's so many options. It's like, oh, man, I didn't work. So, and it's a pain in the ass to take those apart and rebuild them because it's That's dual right. spring. Yeah. So you're like, shit, like that didn't work and that didn't work and that didn't work until you yeah. find like that soft, like medium feel to them and then you run them. But yeah, yeah the, the, I think that's one of the reasons why it's off putting because there's a lot of tuning in those. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, just shocks in Sticks general. And, and if you ever yeah. post online and you want to start a whole thing, just post something about shocks. You know, I mean, it's like. I well, run shock with you dads. Oh my god, you don't know how to tune. I mean, it's just like people are so mean. And yeah. Oh, so no. I, you know, I asked the question. I'm like, okay, I want to learn how to tune shocks. Is there some video or something where I can learn? And there was no like, there was no reply. I mean, the the reply was, well, you just have to experiment. But I'm like, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm like, you know, should I go, you know, stiffer spring? You know, and and I I think a lot of the guys that are very critical of people who run bands they're not running these extreme vertical lines 
because I don't care how soft your springs are. You get to a certain point, it's going to unload. It's but if you're unload, doing these yeah. kind of angles, it won't unload and you'll be okay. You know, but even my son, he'll try some of the extreme lines. So we have the band. So take it off. He'll put it on. Sometimes the bands help because it, it allows it to drop off out more for the pullover. But sometimes he, he needs it to stay in because it's it's falling off. Right. You know, so yeah. it depends. But so I, it, it's been, you know, learning, OK, should we go thicker, you know, heavier oil in the front and this. And so, you know, that's been another a whole nother, you know, thing about trying to experiment with. And the most recent another kind of thing I did <laughs> was it online. I think I put the 5000 diff fluid in my desert lizards in my Joker. Oh <laughs> shit! That damn yeah, yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking about. It it's actually Oof. I like it. So I tried eighty. Really? Yeah, I like it, and it's still where is it? So I don't know if you can. Uh, so it's still. I mean, it, it's slower, but it it's still oh, okay. it still moves right, and yeah. so. With the flex, oh, with the flex of the PBX bad, chassis, yeah. what I noticed was, uh, so with with that comp with the boulders, we couldn't go head on. We had to go at an angle, right, to get the tire mm -hmm. on it. But then the front would flip. And then the rear, you know, it doesn't hold. So it's flexible. So with a stiff chassis, you can, like, float it up more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So with, with ours, uh, it, it wasn't really floating. And so the, the front would fall and it, it would roll. You know, so we're having issues with that. Um, so I wanted thicker oil to kind of slow that down. And it does, you know, but it's not. Oh, did we lose you? Uh, okay, you're back. No. Okay. Are we good? That was weird. Okay. Yeah. Are we good? So um, anyway, so for that one, I experimented. I'm like, well, worst case, I can always change it out. So I filled it up like normal too, like a little over halfway, you know how. And then I compressed it. It squeezed out the extra, made sure it compresses all the way you know, kind of thing. Um, I'm just running mm -hmm. the mediums, the medium length short, uh, soft spring, uh, under the plunger to, to pull it down and the soft, the shortest soft spring on top to, you know, so it has a little bit, um, uh, a little sprung to it, sprung to it, but, uh, yeah. it's working good, you know? And then for my sons, I put, uh, 80 weight in the front. I went from 60 to 80. And what I noticed with, on the drafts with the 80, it would unload, you know, when it doesn't load, it it's harder to come back down. But it's starting to work in now, so it's better now. But when I first put it in, it, like it would unload and kind of just stay unloaded. So yeah, we're using stuck, the bands. Yeah. yeah, so the bands were better. Yeah. But it's getting better now. I think it's working in a little bit. So now it does kind of come back down. So yeah, and I told, and I've noticed that sometimes with drives too. That after a while, like when you first build them, they're a little sticky. Mm -hmm. But it's like breaking them in, and then after that yeah. little ring gets kind of broken into, gets a little bit of uh, grease in there, like the green slime, then it'll be like really smooth. Yeah, so it's like anything else. Like it's like new tires. You break them in. You know, yeah. at first they're like pretty crappy, and then you break in tires, and you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I asked him if he likes yeah. it, and he's like, "Yeah, let's just leave it for now. It seems to be working okay." But I mean, that's basically what we've been doing. Is you know, even with the twenty fours, it's like, okay, can we hit this line? And oh, can't hit it, can't hit it, can't hit it. Okay, now we can hit it. You know, so you keep making tweaks. You know, like move some, move it a hole back or hold up or hold down or you know that type of thing. And and uh, yeah. so that's how. I mean, they're doing really good. You know, and it it's shown me that compared to the other top guys, that our rigs are at the top. You know, maybe not the best. But it's definitely, you know, from what I've seen, we're definitely hitting lines that other rigs cannot hit, you know, which is, it's always nice, you know, to see that we are doing. Yeah, but you put well. in the work, you know, so you yeah. put in the tuning time and yeah. all that stuff to make them. Because realistically, dude, you build a rig, you take it out to the rocks, it's going to run like shit. Yeah. You know? It right. takes a couple weeks, you know, to make adjustments and try new things. And then after a while, it, it realistically takes about a month or a few packs yeah. and you'll get the feel for it. But yeah like anything else you know you just got to make your, your subtle adjustments to your driving you know um get get comfortable with yeah the pretty much yeah yeah i uh, got a couple questions i want to run by you yeah yeah it's a uh, pick one and go with it uh you want to do this same? no good sure yep all right i'm illiterate bro i can't read <laughs> i'm the third grade <laughs> so go ahead all right so brushed or brushless brushless 
Servo on axle, servo on chassis? No, it's servo on axle. Straight axle, portal axle? Definitely portals. Hard body, Lexan? Uh, Lexan. You know, I'm, I'm one of those uh, performance over everything, so I, I'd rather run the cage. <laughs> the cage? Yeah. We should do cage or Lexan. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, um, yeah. 3S or 4S? Gotta go 4. <laughs> Um, yeah, one point nine or two point two. I like the two point twos. My son's on one point nines, but I'm definitely liking the two point twos. Okay, okay. And then um, gates or trail. What is that? Gates or trail? Oh, gates all day. Gates. Yeah. Uh, one ten or one twenty four. One ten. I mean, hard for him. What? My one twenty four is hardly getting any love. I mean, you know, they're there. Oh. But, uh, you got it. Do you have any uh, twenty-four pork bellies? What is that? Twenty-four pork bellies. Oh yeah. So this is on straight axles, oh, nice. super eights, and then this is on. So these are super eights, but they have the old portal. LGRP had portals a long time ago. They don't what? make them anymore. Oh, sure. But what I did, they, they were too narrow. So I swapped the portals onto the Super 8 housing to make it really oh. wide. And then I had to so change... the Capra version. So then I had to change the C- CVDs. So I had to take them apart and put the... Because mm-hmm. they, were, they weren't long enough. So I put the Super 8 and I connected it to the portal end of the CVD. You know, so <laughs> it fits. Oh, you don't wow. have no modification. You just... Huh. You take off the outer ring, pull the pin. You take the longer Super 8. You put it on the portal. You put the oh. pin back in Oh, you so just it changed the pin, the... yeah, the head. Yeah, you just changed. Yeah, because it's got a longer oh, shaft on it. Okay, I see what exactly what you did. Yeah. Huh. Cool. So the rear I had to leave narrow because they're, they're molded into the uh, housing. So I mm-hmm. had to use uh, wider hubs on the back and narrower hubs on the front, so it wasn't too crazy. But this thing does amazing. I mean, both of them do amazing, but mm-hmm. the portals I like better with the clearance. So I, I just ordered noticed, on your videos. I never noticed there were portals. Yeah, you can't really tell, but this one, yeah. So no, That's hard to wild. see. And it doesn't from the video. It doesn't look like it. It gets caught up on a lot either. Yeah, Those so pretty... it, it, there is a big difference. So this one, just with the straight, it is different. And so my son likes driving this one because he uh, likes, and it's a little longer too. So he's always like, "Come on, Dad!" Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Um, All right. So I um, did buy. Question. I just ordered a couple sets of the Mias. Plus 11 portals oh. for the 24. So I'm going to swap oh, out fine. the Rasta one. I'm going to swap this one for the portals. And uh, I think I'm going to put one of the ec- the new Echo I have uh, on portals. So I was supposed to swap this guy out. So, I mean, if you run the big the big tires, big wheels and tires. That's pretty I mean, much, yeah. You don't yeah, really you don't need, really need it. Um, yeah. But I just want to try it. And the, the intent, so he built these new rails that was made for the carrier, although I, I made it work. I drilled my own hole and made it work. And so I was just going to swap this over to the new rails, but similar to Ralph, I'm like, maybe I'll just build another one. So I'm building another one instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, which is how I end up with that many. But uh, so I have the rails. So I'm waiting for the axles to come in, but it's plus 11 uh, portals. So we'll see how those go. But so definitely love the portals. Yeah. Nice. I haven't seen much 20, um, 24 portals. Uh, next question. Dig or two-speed? Uh, I don't have either, actually. And I if think with the brushless, one, we don't, you know, with the 4S brushless, I'm running 1850, and that I don't really need the two-speed. I think it's enough. Yeah. So, so I guess if I had dig. to choose, I would probably choose dig. Right. Yeah. Um, Three-pin servo or direct power servo? I like the direct power. Cool, cool. And then um, we kind of this one scale crawlers or extreme crawlers. Yeah, extreme. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone you would recommend that you'd want to see on the show next? Oh, hmm, I don't know. That's a good one. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Honestly, I I I'm not even sure what. Uh, 
the other podcast people you have to. Like, I didn't even know you did a podcast. So <laughs> well, just sorry. everyone. I mean, Any, anybody you would like to see on there. It doesn't even have to be someone that we know. It could be someone we don't know. We could reach out. Uh, someone that you've seen on YouTube. He's going to just be like, pass? <laughs> Next <laughs> question? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll have to pass on that. No, like, fine. I really that's don't fine. know. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Cool, cool. Well, we appreciate you being on the show, man, taking the time out of your uh, busy day. Yeah. And uh, how's the uh, how's it looking out there right now? Is it nice? What is that? Is it <laughs> how's the, how's the weather out there right now? Oh, it was a little it's rainy really today, good. but not too bad. You know, just a little drizzles. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, it's tough you know, out here. I think uh, like 80s, time. you know, it's sunny most of the time. Comfortable. When when it gets to the 70s, we're cold. You know, when it gets to the high <laughs> 80s, we're hot. You know, so it's rough. <laughs> oh, that's, Very that's consistent cool, all year round here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to have like a like a pork belly uh, team trip out to Hawaii. <laughs> I'm down. That'd be, awesome. that'd be dope. That'd be a good excuse. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna take a team trip out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. Well, again, we appreciate you being on the show. No, yeah, thank all you. All right, man. Well, uh, we'll be in touch and then uh yeah, we'll see you at uh Pro Liner when you're in the area. All right. Then. Yep. Awesome. All right. All right, the brother. Thank you. Later. Thank you guys for everything. You guys have been joining us for our podcast. Uh, this has been an awesome podcast for our first time, actually. Yeah, first season. Uh, RC Crawlers and Coffee, first season. Thank you guys for joining us. This is amazing. Um, we didn't know how this was going to go, but apparently really good. Yeah. Uh, so it is it is the first season, and unfortunately, it's going to be the last. Um, we're going to be starting something new. So Crawlers and Coffee is, you know, this is, is going to be the last episode. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're not doing this anymore we're just venturing out to new platforms on the rc community so something uh, bigger better new yeah. um definitely more people involved with this so it's just something more exciting for us we're excited for a new horizon yep just stay tuned and you know we continue to do what we're doing is just gonna be a little different we're gonna have a little, yeah yeah we're gonna have more fun just yeah stay tuned and follow us right thank on, you guys. guys for the support thank later. you later Thank you for joining us in another episode of RC Cars and Coffee. Did you get the trailer you're aching for? If so, join us next time for more RC wisdom and pro tips. Till then, happy crawling! That's that felt better. Okay. Cool. Hey. I'll make it. I'll make it. Do you need a